Okay, this is from a book, Medicinal Mushrooms, Ancient Remedies for Modern Ailments by Georges M. Halpern, M.D., Ph.D., and Andrew H. Miller. And I'm going to read from a chapter, page 132, Behind the Scenes. And this is called The Story of the Orgasmic Mushroom. To make sure that this book is not anticlimactic, we offer the story of the orgasmic mushroom, a mushroom of the genus Dichyophora. This mushroom has not been granted GRAS, generally recognized as safe, status by the United States Food and Drug Administration. It has not been clinically tested. Some of what we are about to report about the mushroom is highly speculative, but we believe our curious readers would like to know. Mushrooms of the genus Dictyophora have not had aerial spore bodies. Similar to plants, they depend on insects to reproduce. The insects are attracted by the odor of the mushroom. They come to the mushroom, get its sticky spores on their bodies, and carry off the spores. As the insects travel from place to place, they spread the Dictyophora's spores and ensure its survival. On the big island of Hawaii, on the hot rocky lava flows, there grows a unique species of Dictyophora mushroom. The mushroom has a very fast life cycle, even faster than most Dictyophoras. It lives between 30 minutes and 4 hours. Consequently, the mushroom has a very pungent order, odor. It needs a strong odor to attract insects and thereby reproduce during its short lifespan. Researchers have discovered that insect behavior is dictated by the sense of smell and that sex pheromones in plant odors are what attract insects to plants. Mushrooms of the genus Dictyophora smell something like rotting meat. They give off a strong odor due to a large number of sex pheromones. Mycologists report that you can smell the mushroom from 30 feet away. It is believed that the Dictyophora species that grows in Hawaii produces a compound that is identical to or very close or a very close mimic of the compound that is produced in human females during the arousal stage. How this compound works in the human female can be described in terms of neurotransmitters. These are chemicals produced in the brain or elsewhere in the body that create activity in the brain. For example, when you are frightened, the body creates a small amount of adrenaline and it has a profound and nearly instant effect. Adrenaline is a potent neurotransmitter. Similarly, in the human female, a compound, unnamed as yet, is emitted during arousal. As a woman goes through the various stages of arousal, the level of this compound increases in her blood. Eventually, it reaches a threshold qu quantity, at which point a cascade of physical events is triggered, an orgasm. When you cut your arm, your brain produces small amounts of what is essentially morphine, the same chemical compound that the opium poppy produces. Just as the poppies produce morphine millions of times greater than what the brain requires, the species of Dictyophora in question produces a compound millions of times greater than a woman produces naturally in her body during arousal. The compound is a volatile one. When a woman smells one of these mushrooms, a spontaneous intense orgasm may occur. The species of Dictyphora found in Hawaii has become quite popular with some myco mycologists for that very reason. Uh, Phallus impud impudicus 
Phallus impudicus, the orgasm mushroom, is nothing new and enjoys a rich folklore in many lands. A glance at the genus may explain what is, what its, where its reputation comes from. The mushroom resembles a phallus. Uh, Hadrianus Junius, in his Phallae, a description with pictures from life of the fungi growing occasionally in the sand in Holland, that's the name of his book, I guess, wrote the following about the mushroom in the 16th century. It is very effective for intense and unbearable pains in the joints, above all those caused by passions and limitless debaucheries that exceed the limits of license. The mushroom is used in New Guinea to, to encourage cattle to breed. In traditional Chinese medicine, it is used to relieve rheumatism. It is a folk remedy for ulcers, asthma, gout, and other ailments in Latvia. In England, the mushroom is known by the names stinkhorn, devil's stink pot, devil's horn, stinking pole cat, and wood witch. In her memoir piece, Gwen Ravarot, 1885 to 1957, writes the following about her Aunt Eddie, a proper Victorian lady who took it upon herself to remove the gaudy stinkhorn, stinkhorn mushroom from the nearby woods to protect young ladies' morals. By the way, Aunt Eddie in this passage was the daughter of none other than Charles Darwin. The Latin grosser name she refers to, you will recall, is Phallius impudic, imp, impudicus. In, and then it's a quote. In our native woods, there grows a kind of toadstool called in the vernacular the stinkhorn, though in Latin it bears a grosser name. This name is justified, for the fungus can be hunted by the scent alone. And this was Aunt Eddie's greatest invention. Armed with a basket and a pointed stick, and wearing a special hunting cloak and gloves, she would sniff her way around the wood, pausing here and there, her nostrils twitching, when she caught whiff of her prey. Then, at last, with a deadly pounce, she would fall upon her victim and then poke his putrid carcass into her basket. The catch was brought back and burnt in deepest secrecy on the drawing room fire. <laughs> she probably was getting off herself. <laughs> With all the doors <laughs> locked because, because of the morals of the maids. <laughs> Micrologists believe that the, dic the Dictyophora species that grows on the lava flows of the big island of Hawaii because it lives in such a harsh environment, has evoked an especially intense odor. Very few insects live on the lava flows. To call flies and other insects from a distance, the odor must be especially pungent, and the compound that produces the odor must be especially strong. By some estimates, as many as 50% of American women suffering from orgasmic dysfunction which is defined as difficulty achieving orgasm or the inability to achieve orgasm. Scientists hope to isolate the compound in the dic Dictophora species from Hawaii and make it available to these women. One problem will be devising test protocols for experimental trials. Telling subjects that they are being tested to see if they achieve states of arousal or orgasms is almost guaranteed to skew the test results. One proposed technique is to take saliva swabs from subjects in the non-aroused state and at different stages of arousal, run the samples through a gas chrom a chromat chromatograph, and note how the arousal compound increases in intensity after the dictaphora-derived substance is administered. Incidentally, the mushroom does not appear to be effective in men. Men find the odor of dictaphora nothing short of repulsive. 
A handful of male scientists, however, in an attempt to answer the age-old question of what an orgasm feels like to women, have proposed giving the mushroom compound to men in quantities high enough to trigger a female orgasm. Isn't that interesting? And the next one is Sounds like fun. the value of multiple mushroom formulas. This is a really, really good book. You should send a copy of that to uh, Janet and uh, Mickey. Yeah, I will. Mickey I, will I'm find gonna, that mushroom. Yeah, no, I'll put it on Janet, will I? <laughs> huh? I'll put it on, on the internet. This is a book, uh, copyright 2002. I should read the disclaimers. This book contains reports of studies and anecdotal accounts concerning medicinal mushrooms. The information reported herein is derived from sources believed to be reliable. However, the authors do not warrant <coughs> the adequacy or accuracy <coughs> of these studies or accounts. <coughs> the authors are not providing medical advice. Anyone with any of the medical di di conditions discussed herein should seek medical treatment and not attempt to self-cure with the use of medicinal mushrooms alone. Do not attempt to self-medicate for potentially serious medical conditions without medical supervision. Medicinal mushrooms, like other herbal supplements, are not regulated by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA. No statement contained herein has been evaluated by the FDA. The products mentioned herein are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. All herbal supplements have both benefits and risks. Information about long-term side effects and interactions is incomplete. The reader should not assume that because an adverse reaction or interaction is not mentioned in this book, the use of medicinal mushrooms is always safe. If you suspect you could be experiencing an adverse reaction from an herb or a combination of herbs and drugs, you should immediately consult with a health professional. The author, several mycologists, and several companies mentioned in the book transact business with each other and have financial interests in some of the entities mentioned herein. The authors have accepted no promotional money in exchange for the endorsement of any product herein. And uh, let's see, all rights reserved, no portion of this book may be reproduced or transmitted in any form or by any means without the written permission of the publisher. M. Evans and Company, 216 East 46th Street, New York, New York, 10017. Library of Congress Cataloging <coughs> and Publication Data. Mm -hmm. Miller Andrew, and uh, then I guess it's got the ISBN numbers. So what I'm going to do is put this up under fair use. That this is really. What's that? I'm, I'm going to post this on YouTube under fair use. And then we'll contact M. Evans and Company, 216 East 49th Street, New York, New York, 10017 for zip code enthusiasts. And for those who don't consent to being under a military jurisdiction, you can add on 9998. <laughs>